In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the velocity from position time graph, also known as an xt graph. Now, the velocity function can be found by taking the derivative of the position function. And whenever you take the derivative of a function, you can calculate the slope of the tangent line at any point with that derivative function. So because velocity is the derivative of the position function, the velocity can be determined by taking the slope of the position function. So we could determine the velocity at any one of these segments by calculating the slope of those line segments. So let's go ahead and do that. Now here's some things you want to know. Whenever the position function is increasing, the velocity is going to be positive. In other words, the slope of that segment will be positive. If the position function is constant, the velocity will be zero. If the position function is decreasing, velocity will be negative. So during the first five seconds, the velocity is going to be zero because we have a horizontal tangent line. Position is not changing. So if an object's position is not changing, what that means is that the object is not moving. So its velocity is zero. And during this part here, the velocity is also zero. So anytime you have a horizontal tangent, the velocity will be zero. Now, what is the velocity during t equals 5 and t equals 10? What is the velocity at this point in the curve? How can we figure that out? Well, we can calculate the slope between these two points using the rise over run formula or we could use this formula. The slope is the change in y divided by the change in x. Likewise, the velocity is going to be the change in position over the change in time, since the position function is in the y-axis. So it's going to be x final minus x initial divided by t final minus t initial. So x final is going to be a position of 10 meters minus x initial, which would be 25 meters, divided by p final minus t initial. So 10 seconds minus 5 seconds. So the change in position, 10 meters minus 25 meters, that's a negative 15 meters. And the change in time on the bottom is 5 seconds. So negative 15 divided by 5 is negative 3. So the velocity is going to be negative 3 meters per second during this time interval. Now, because it's a straight line, the velocity is going to be constant during that segment. But if it wasn't a straight line, what we would have is the average velocity. In order to calculate the instantaneous velocity, we need to determine the slope of the tangent line. So here we have a velocity of negative 3 meters per second. Now, let's calculate the velocity of this segment of the graph. So we're going to use the same formula. Focusing on these two points, the final position is 20 meters. The initial position is going to be 10 meters. The t final is 20, and t initial is going to be 15. So 20 meters minus 10 meters, that's the change in position of 10 meters. And the change in time is 5 seconds. 10 over 5 will give us 2. So the velocity during this segment is 2 meters per second. So as we could see, whenever the position, whenever the position function is decreasing, the velocity is going to be negative. When the position function is increasing, the velocity is going to be positive. And when the position function is constant, the velocity is 0.
Now, during this last part, notice that the velocity, I mean, the position is decreasing, but it's decreasing at an accelerated rate. So there's going to be acceleration at this point. So because the position is decreasing, it means that the velocity will be negative. But the velocity is not constant. The velocity is becoming more negative, so to speak. The velocity is decreasing. Notice that this shape is concave down. Concavity tells you basically the second derivative. Acceleration is the second derivative of position. Acceleration is the first derivative of the velocity function, but the second derivative of the position function. So because this shape is concave down, this is a concave down shape, the acceleration is negative. And whenever the acceleration is negative, it means that the velocity is decreasing. If the acceleration was positive, the velocity would be increasing. So what we have is a negative velocity that is decreasing or becoming even more negative. So for instance, here, the velocity is 0. Here, the velocity might be negative 1. Over here, the velocity might be negative 2. So it's decreasing by becoming more negative due to that negative acceleration based on that concave down shape of the graph that we have here.